Because you see something? There's a scripture that says this. Man, men, women, mankind, doesn't know his own heart. And he cannot know it. It's impossible for man to know his own heart. I don't mean this thing here pumping blood. This is the heart of man right here. The seat of your intelligence. You can't know it. Brother, I guarantee you, you study, that man's got a master's degree. Right there, in business. Ain't that right, Brother Jerry? He studied hard and long for it. And brother, I'm, I'm proud of him. Because that, that, that takes something. You've got to make a commitment to people. Absolutely. We're not talking about that. We're talking about knowing in God. Yes. We're talking about knowing God, knowing in God, knowing things of God. You can't get it. You can have 50 master's degrees. You can have a line and exclamation points for a mile long. And you still can't figure God out with this right here. The carnal man, the natural man, carnal man. See, somebody want to say to me, I'm, I'm not carnal, I'm just natural. If you're natural, you're fine. Yes. That's right. Same thing. Forget it. Jesus said that, not me. Paul said that, not me. A natural man receives not the things of God. Right. Because they are spiritually discerned. And if man's just natural, he ain't got no spirit like that. What I'm trying to say, church, is I love you. That's what I come down here for tonight. I come down here to love you. I come down here to stand up in my heart. The Lord put this on my heart today. I didn't plan it. I'm laying on that blessed couch. That woman put eye drops in me every 15 minutes. You shouldn't even be up. And I started thinking about it. It was 12 o'clock. I said, I started thinking about coming here tonight. So I began to pray. You know the first thing I said, Sandy? What? I said, let Lord let Jerry and Sandy have a good spirit tonight. Yes. <laughs> That's the first thing I prayed for. Well, Just like I told my doctor that did my operation on my eye. Her name is McCabe. Dr. McCabe. Kathy, Kathleen McCabe. <laughs> Sounds like John Wayne's, one of the women in John Wayne's movie, don't yeah, Kathleen yeah. McCabe. Yeah. Yeah. I told her. I didn't get to see her in the operation. They didn't put me out. I could see, but I couldn't see because of the light in my eye. But I knew she was there. And I started to say something to her, but I said, no, then ain't a good time when I'm to be talking to her. She's doing something over there. Later, she might take two years to talk about But anyhow, so today when I went back, I had it yesterday. This morning I had to be there at 740. She's going to check it. So when she yeah, come in the room, I, I stood up and I said, Kathleen, how you doing? I've only met her one time in my life. She said, good. I said, well, I'm glad to see you. And uh, I sat back down in the chair and she said, well, I got to look at your eye. Check it out. So she stuck that thing. I took my chin. I just stuck that light in there. Wandered around. Look over here. Look over there. She said, you're doing good. I said, I know I am. I said, I can see colors now. Let me show you something. Just see, God helped you. Yes, God was right there in that room. Yes, <coughs> this eye and this eye. I had an operation on me years ago to take off stigmatism, some kind of something. Well, they just did it in the doctor's back, in his back room. Stuck a needle here, a needle there, and a needle there, and pried that thing open with that thing that they opened the eyeball with, cut that thing off, stick, put some stitches in it, you know, black thread, put some a patch over it, put some uh, cream on it. So you go home, John. Come back in four or five days. Well, I did. Well, it left my eyeball all lumpy. No. Oh. Well, she, uh, she, today she says, uh, I want to check you. And then she told me, you're doing good. Brother. And I said, Kathleen, I'm going to tell you. I said, I prayed for you Wednesday night in church. I said, there were probably 150 people that prayed for you. She said, 150 people? I said, yes, ma'am. She's a young woman. Yeah. What, 35 years old? So see, I'm talking about somebody that has a degree, has knowledge, has an understanding. She might have that thing in her hand, <coughs> but I know who moves it. Yeah. 
I know who moved it. She might not know. Amen. But I do. Yes. She admitted that. Because I know there ain't a thing a man can do without yeah. God allowed. Yeah, that's true. Good, bad, ugly, or otherwise. Yeah. In a bar, that's out of it. a bar. That's it. Don't make no difference where it's at, who it is. If God don't let I've always, I used to study. Boy, I, I loved reading everything. I'd read tomato can to Eisenhower's <laughs> volumes and all that stuff. Didn't make no difference. Just be able to read. That's what expands your mind. Yeah. See, that's why I want you to read the Word of God. You know what it does? Your mind goes, hmm, 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 hmm. And all of a sudden, them things that's coming from God, instead of having a little ball about like that big to hit, it's got something that big around to hit. They're just soaking it up like a sponge. Yes. Y'all believe that? It's the truth. And uh, see, don't ever stop thinking about what God's doing in every moment of your life. I don't care where you at, who you're around, who you with. Don't let somebody despise you. <coughs> Learn to live above the thoughts of people Praise. and the words of people. You can say anything you want to say about my wife. Now, y'all can listen to me. You can either believe it or don't believe it. You can say anything about her you want to. And you can say anything you want about me right to my face. I'm not going to do anything to you. Because I've learned something. Me and that old man sitting right there with two shirts behind two standing. He's 82 years old. His name is Hansel. Shop. He's from Ohio, Miamisburg. He's a pretty good fisherman. Me and him are like natural brothers. He lost his natural brother, Jerry, when he was 35 years old. Cancer got a little knot right there on him, and six weeks, six months, eight, hope right through it. Killed him. He met me, and we had some things in common, natural things. But I was kind of diverse from one another. He had sense, I didn't have any. <laughs> Amen. But, but together, for 32 years now, we've gone fishing. Wow. Everybody thinks, well, we don't go very often. I mean, we go once every, we try to go once a week or once every two weeks. A lot of times it's once every month. We don't do no saltwater fishing. We go strictly for largemouth bass, and if them weird snooker bite or 30 pound catfish, we'll catch them. Yeah. I guarantee you. And they don't know us. Here's how good they know us. Yeah. We go out there, they see the boat, a lot of them will come and jump in the boat. <laughs> but anyhow, that man right there, we have drove down here where we do a lot of fishing. Yeah. Right here, Pine Gordon. Shell Creek, Prairie Creek, all back out there. Beach yeah. River. We'd be riding along. And I look over there and that old man got tears running down his face. I'm driving. He's sitting over there. See, I'll tell him, don't do nothing around me because I'll tell him. <laughs> I said, what's the matter, man? He says, just can't believe. I just can't believe the word of God. I can't believe this. He said, why did God wait till I'm 70 years old before I ever opened my eyes and done anything? <coughs> he said, I still don't see nothing. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. I said, Hank, long as you think with this thing here, you're in trouble. You'll get in trouble. You'll stay in trouble. You'll never get out of it if you think with this right here. Yeah. He said, and I see wheels turning. I see the wheels turn that man's mind. Mm -hmm. He's thinking. That guy's an idiot. That's John Henry. He'll say anything like that. I, I know what he thinks. He couldn't understand how he could think without this thing. Thank you, Lord. Believe me, when Jesus said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, my thoughts are high as the heaven above the earth above your thoughts. Amen. He didn't say that just to be saved. He put five or six, fifteen words on a page in that Bible. No. He meant that with all of his heart. Because he knew what man was. Yeah. Nobody had to tell him what was in man because he knew. Yeah. I kept telling that for 30 years. I kept telling that. 
God had gave me a revelation a long time ago. I couldn't do it, but I, had, I knew it was there. I knew there was a way to think, but not with this. See, there's little words that born again, born of the Word and the Spirit, born of God, one birth, three phases. The one that's born of God does not commit sin because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. John 3, 1 John 3. Okay? Put it together. It's that simple. Bam. It's like making a sandwich. One piece of bread, one piece of ham, one piece of cheese. Put some mayonnaise up. Boom, cut it. Put it on plate. Just like that. That simple. And Brother Marlon will tell you, the Word of God is the simplest thing there is. It's us with this thing up here called our mind, our thoughts, our wants, our desires, that take the Word and twist it and turn it. Just like a cork, or you can't get it, you can't get it, just a big, big square block, and you're trying to put it in a round hole, you can't do it. But brother, when you learn to be led of the Spirit, yes. when you yeah. let the God yeah. of heaven, yeah. when your mind becomes His mind, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not Robert in this world of God. But I'm going to tell you something, I don't think it's Robert for me to be equal with Christ. Hallelujah. Do you? You should be equal with Christ. You're not going to be Christ, but you're going to be equal with Christ. You're going to be free from sin, free from death. Eternal life you'll have as he had. See? That's what we're here for. Amen. There's something better. Amen. This is a beautiful home. I've walked in every blessed room here. It is beautiful. They've worked hard for it, lived it, sweated it. Just like God told Adam, you're going to live by the sweat of your brow. Mm -hmm. That man put some sweat out and build this. Yes, he did. And a lot of other things, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So did I. Amen. So did everyone here. She's still sweating. You working? Am I working? Are you working? My mind's sure working right yeah. now. Uh -huh. My wife? She retired 35 years school boy. Now she's working for my son. Got kind of crazy. Sweat. Sweat. You shall live by the sweat of your brow. Amen. Well, there's coming a day. Amen. And it's Amen. here. Amen. It's here. Yes. Don't look and say, it's coming. It's here. There ain't nothing coming. Everything Jesus did, he did it in a completeness. Is that right, Brother Lord? Yes. Amen. He didn't create the foot of a man and let it lay there for a thousand years. Then create the man. <coughs> he created a man whole. Boom. Right. The Word of God with the Spirit of God is what creates within you life. He is the life. Yes, I want to be there. Amen. He's the truth. I want to be there. He is the way. Mm -hmm. I want to be there. Amen. That's what I want to have my life. Amen. 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 Listen. Amen. Amen. There ain't nothing Amen. like having Christ. There ain't nothing like having Jesus. In Amen. Amen. It ain't nothing like sitting down under anointed ministry. Yes. Hearing the words of yes. Getting the words of Amen. 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 Having a revelation. Amen. Revelation. A revealing. Jesus said, look over here. This is me. I'm going to reveal this to you. That's what he's saying all the time. Every time he's doing something. And he's always doing something. Every time we sing a song, just like the songs we sang tonight, those songs had words of life in them. If you listen to the message that was coming through the song, which Christ gave my wife, which we were all singing, there was no message there. That's right. And I know I've taken up a lot of time. I didn't do it on purpose. I did it because I felt God. I prayed on the way down here. Now I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you, I'm vain in some things. I was a Marine. I spit shine my shoes for four solid months and never put them on my feet. You could see that deep in that shoe. They wasn't a blemish. You could see everything. All the way down through them shoes, you could see it. 
You step on my shoes, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Whether you kill me, I'm gonna hit you. You mess my hair up, and I'll hit you. Well, guess what happened to me when I first came to break the gospel tabernacle? With a pack of lucky strikes in my white shirt. Walked up on the front porch of the church. Billy Harris and Sister Brother Harris and my wife standing there. Well, she wasn't my wife then. She just, that lady was standing there. That sister was standing there. Right here I'm standing. Billy Harris there, James Harris there, Teresa there. Started talking to me, brother. How you doing? I had a cigarette that I pumped it over in Brother Marlowe's yard there. He used to live right there. Oh, I didn't do nothing. Now listen, I got a bad spirit. I just, I didn't think about that. Yeah. See, I don't think about a lot of things y'all think about. See, you, you, you think about what the day is today. I haven't thought about the day of the day for 30 something years. I have never thought about that. I don't have a calendar. If it wasn't for that woman and my son, I wouldn't have a blessed phone. You see, I don't live the way about this. I'm not saying you got to live that way. I'm just telling you what I do. So anyhow, that vanity was in me. I've gotten rid of a lot of it, but not all of it, but I'm working. So I had to put shine shoes on. And I'm dressed to kill. I weighed 156 pounds, and I look Good. <laughs> Hair come back in a DA on both sides, Woo. slick down. Well, no, well, no, caves or whatever you call it. <laughs> Hair was down here. Sideburns come down, you know, have them all trimmed. My Lord. <laughs> and Billy Harris, of all the people in the world, yeah. Billy Harris, my wife's best friend, they love one another. She wouldn't harm a blessed fly. I lick jelly jars. I lick syrup jars. You come to my house, that's not my table. I got a, a pour syrup, I'm gonna. He ain't gonna hurt you. He drink out of a dipper. For 30 years, I drank out of a dipper. The whole family, nobody got sick. Now we think. See, there it goes. There it goes. That's what I want to tell you about. Adam had a thought. Everything in this, in everything in your life, everyone in your life, starts with one thing, a thought. Yeah. Nothing else. It starts with a thought. Adam thought. That's where he messed up. That's what I was talking to him about. He thought with this. You learn not to think with this, but you think with the Spirit of God. That's the mind of God. Mind of Christ, mind of God, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You learn how to think with it. It'll talk to you all the time. It never leaves you. It's always there. It's always ready. Every moment of your life, waking, sleeping, it's there. It's talking to you. It's to lead you. You don't think that Holy Ghost doesn't lead 24 hours a day, 24-7? Yeah. He does. Yeah. But you've got to hear it. You've got to hear it. Right. That's why Jesus said, they said, why don't you, why do you speak to everybody in parables? And Jesus said, it's given to you, talking about the twelve, his disciples, right. to hear and to see. But it's not given to them, yeah. the multitude. Right. He didn't open their eyes. He didn't come here to open their eyes. No. He came here to put a foundation of twelve men, yeah. a government on this earth. And it wound up about 120 in the upper room. And that was the beginning. So Sister Harris, with all her godliness and righteousness, and I didn't know anything back then. I was dumb as cardboard. She reached over to her foot and put her foot on my shoe and went like that. And when I said, she reached up there and done my hair like that. And I lost it. Oh, I lost Whoa. I said some things that y'all don't want to hear me say, but I said them. Oh, and I didn't really care who heard me. She didn't care. And she said, what kind of spirit is that? That's right. That's exactly Coming out of you. <coughs> Brother, my mind, the God of heaven, <laughs> the first time God ever talked to me, that really gave me a revelation. Yeah. 
But she said, what kind of spirit has that come out of you? I said, what kind of spirit was that that stepped on my shoe and messed my hair in? She didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. I love that woman. From that day to day, cancer away. I love her. But see, I've learned some things since then. Yeah. Yes, I like to dress up nice. But, see, I can say a lot on that. You can come down here anywhere, wear any old thing you want to. People say, well, it doesn't make no difference. It really doesn't make a difference. It's not making a difference to this, but it makes a difference to the way you think well, and your right. attitude toward yes. God. Yes, right. amen. Not, not to me, Absolutely. to God. Right. See, I watch Wednesday night service. I'm an usher. I sit on the platform. I'm an elder. I'm a trustee of the church. <coughs> but I stand guard duty back at the door, whatever you want to call usher duty. And I watched what happened on Wednesday night when we went to this liberal, liberal way of having church. Young people come in, a few songs are sang, young people go in the dining room. First thing I noticed, people wouldn't sit where they're supposed to be sitting. Second thing, people began to dress differently. As soon as the older people began to dress differently. Third thing I noticed was young people took notice of the old people and they began to dress there. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of conversations with my pastor about it. And he's got things working in his mind. That man don't ever stop. Because see, <coughs> it ain't the standards that Sandy and me and Teresa, Sarah, it ain't the standards that we set that count. It's a standard that's already been set in the Word of God that we're trying to 